Haswapper, Hascom, and Hazmap. What's the difference? What's up everyone, I'm Brooklyn with JJ Safety and today we're looking at the differences between Haswapper, Hascom, and Hazmap. In the safety world, we have Haswapper, Hazmap, and Hascom. These three are required trainings related to dangerous or hazardous materials, but each targets a different audience and safety measures. Let's start with HAZCOM as this is the most common training. HAZCOM stands for Hazardous Communication Standard, HCS. HAZCOM training is required by OSHA for anyone exposed to hazardous chemicals under normal working conditions. HAZCOM does not only include training, but in addition to specifying training requirements, HAZCOM also aligns with the Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, your GHS, and consists of requirements for hazard identification, standard labeling and pictograms, in-depth safety data sheets, and a written hazard communication program. You are required to have HAZCOM training if you are exposed to chemical hazards during any duration of your job. During HAZCOM training, you'll be required to recognize chemical hazards, understand and recognize HAZCOM labels, and how to protect yourself on the job. What kind of hazardous substance does HAZCOM cover? HAZCOM will cover chemicals with physical and health hazards, combustible dust, asphyxiants, and several others. Now let's get into HAZWOPPER training. HAZWOPPER is an OSHA standard that is designed specifically for workers who clean up, treat, store, or dispose of hazardous waste. HAZWOPPER stands for Hazardous Waste Operations and Emergency Response. OSHA will only require HAZWOPPER training for three types of workers and their supervisors, emergency responders, operators at uncontrolled hazardous waste sites, and personnel at treatment, storage, and disposal facilities. Substances covered under HAZWOPPER are different than HAZCOM. HAZWOPPER covers any substance defined in the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, any biological agent or other disease-causing agent, any substance listed by the U.S. Department of Transportation as a hazardous material, and hazardous waste as defined by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So what's the difference between HAZCOM and HAZWOPPER? Workers responding to emergency spills must undergo HAZWOPPER training at the first responder level. However, HAZWOPPER does not apply to incidental leaks and spills involving the same substances, nor does it cover employees solely involved in the evacuation during such emergencies. In these cases, only emergency procedures training, meaning HAZCOM requirements, is necessary. One major difference between the two is training. HAZCOM training lasts a couple of hours and employers can provide refresher training if they believe it's appropriate. HAZWOPPER training is more in depth and takes longer. HAZWOPPER requires a 24-hour and a 40-hour initial training based on the risk level, plus an 8-hour refresher training each year. Lastly, let's look into HAZMAT. HAZMAT stands for Hazardous Materials. The U.S. Department of Transportation regulates HAZMAT under the Hazardous Material Regulations. These regulations ensure dangerous substances are transported and handled safely, whether being transported by road, rail, water, or air. HAZMAT training refers to mandatory compliance training on the DOT's HAZMAT regulations. HAZMAT training includes multiple required components which may require multiple courses to complete. HAZMAT employers are required to provide training to HAZMAT employees. What substances are covered under HAZMAT regulations? The DOT describes hazardous materials as one posing an unreasonable risk to health, safety, and property when transported in commerce. This includes toxic, corrosive, flammable, or explosive materials. What's the difference between HAZWOPPER and HAZMAT? HAZMAT and HAZWOPPER training covers different regulations and are managed by separate agencies. HAZMAT and HAZWOPPER apply to different and typically separate sets of workers. HAZMAT training is more common than HAZWOPPER since more workers and more substances are affected by DOT's regulations than the HAZWOPPER standard. Training frequency is also a major difference between the two. HAZWOPPER training is long with defined hours, and HAZMAT training depends on the worker's role, which can make it a few hours or much longer. And HAZMAT training requires less frequent refreshers. It's important to understand the difference between HAZCOM, HAZMAT, and HAZWOPPER because there are different required components of each. 
By understanding the difference, you'll know what training best applies to you and for your work. For more information, refer to OSHA Pubs 3695 and 3844. I'm Brooklyn with JJ Safety. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit us online at jjsafetyllc.com or call us at 866-627-3850.